Good morning and welcome to Friday with the Rev. I can't believe it, but this past week I discovered today's broadcast is our 50th. 5 0, so I thought I better wear something gold. Our 50th broadcast, and I want to thank you because were it not for all of you, these would never have been started. They are the result of wanting to have conversations with people in many parts of the world, many of you whom I'm privileged to know here in the United States, but equally the opportunity of dealing with so many of you when I'm in Asia, when I'm in Bali, and we have time to talk about family caregiving. And that was the origin of these broadcasts, that we could have a conversation about family caregiving, faith, and spirituality. And I've been blessed by so many of your comments, your questions, and blessed to learn of the incredible work that many of you are doing all around the world in family caregiving, whether in a group setting as a leader or in your personal journeys, and often it's both of them. We know that only too well. Now this morning, the topic that I had chosen, because this is the last broadcast before the Thanksgiving holiday here in America, and we've been talking about gratitude, we've been talking about living with gratitude, and today I wanted, so we've been talking a great deal about thanks, I wanted to talk about giving. And there's a prayer that I wrote some time ago that just reached out to me, and so I begin the broadcast by inviting you to just quiet yourself for a moment. A few deep breaths, putting aside the agenda for the rest of the day, or for those of you for whom it's evening, putting aside whatever has gone on during the day. And let's just take a moment to be still. And we pray. In everything, give thanks. Oh, Father, Mother, God, I give you thanks. I give you praise. And I pray that in your divine abundance, I may truly live to give. May I ever pray thanking you for all that you have so richly given to me and for the joy of passing that on to others. For I live to give. Thank you for sunrise, sunset. Thank you for the very breath of life, for smiles, for hugs, for kisses, thumbs up, and the joy of reciprocation. For I live to give. Thank you for helping me to know and to understand that life is an inside job, not an external series of challenges and difficulties to be endured. Rather, they are the stepping stones of growth and grace so that I may better live to give. Thank you for prayer, through which I return in thanksgiving all the many blessings of my life, people, places, and things. And thank you for the strength and wisdom to be your hands, your feet, your arms, your smile, your love to others in my life, to my care recipients and my fellow caregivers. May I live to give. Thank you for this world and the also world of the greater oneness from which we have come and to which we will return. May each step, each breath given to us by you be returned in abundant joy and thanksgiving as we live to give. By your grace, abundance, and love. Amen. I love the phrase, live to give. 
I'm not certain where I first heard it, but I know it wasn't fresh with me. It was given to me. And I like to share it, and I've used it in various speeches before. What I like particularly about the thought in my own life and in others about I live to give. It reminds me that everything I have, every thought, every breath, every material thing was all given to me by the divine. Whatever word you might like to use, the divine, the universe, God, it was given as a gift. And that gift is only made valid when I give it away. For at the moment, I'm simply a steward of each and every possession. We're going to talk about something of that a bit later. But I am merely the blessed recipient. And I'm asked to give forth and to share. Why? Because it comes from the source in whom I live and move and have my being. Now, that comes from the book of Acts, and it reminds us that life isn't out here, or that it's a divine force, God, outside of me, looking down, but rather, and I want to read from a, a, a devotional from this week, because I loved it. I remember that God is not watching me from somewhere out there. Instead, as we read in the book of Acts, in him we live and move and have our being. That means I'm inside of God, and God is inside of me. My whole life and everything in it takes place with the infinite. infinite. The power, strength, and might of the divine is in every breath I take, and I know there is nothing I will ever face alone. That is a powerful statement. And I think that as we look at our lives, we realize a greater strength. And that's one of the things about taking time for New Year's, for Thanksgiving time, for time of reflection, time of contemplation. As we look at our lives in the past, so many things we would never have gotten through, but for the grace and the abundance of God. It also speaks to us for today. No matter what we might be going through in our caregiving journey with another or within our personal life, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, the strength is within us. Because I think it's important for us to remember that bigger picture. Each of us was given the breath of life. That's why I love the word spirituality. The breath, the spirit was put into each and every one of us. And we were sent here from what I like to call, quoting the wonderful Reverend Dr. Barbara Crafton, the also life, that bigger world beyond. We were sent here to be the hands, the feet. Each of us has a calling. But it's all the pieces that make up us, that help us to understand that calling. Now, I'm going to refer to my own life because it's the one that I know the best. And quite frankly, that's true for all of us. The only person we'll spend our whole lives with is ourselves. And we need to look at that as a point of reference. We need to look at that and be grateful for the strength to have gotten through things in the past, which are going to get us through the things today. Because God put into each and every one of us all that we will ever need to meet the challenges that we presently face. And we've been promised that no burden will be given to us for which the strength will not also be given. But it's not out here. You can't buy it, as I often say in family caregiving. You can't pay it away. You can't prescribe it away. You can't pray it away. You need all three. But ultimately, you've got to go through it, and it's my prayer that you grow through it, just as I've been blessed to do. But we were given the gifts 
we were given a calling. What were we asked to do down here in this world? Well, I always felt I was called to be a minister. But there were a lot of blockades. There were a lot of challenges along that way. In 1971, graduating from seminary, I was not what the world was looking for, quote unquote, in a minister. But God had a plan. I met a man who was to be my husband for 41 years. We were to be blessed to have a, an adopted child for 20 years. Yes, it was much too short, but it's always that way in life, for we want love to go on forever. But with some in our lives, we have only a short period. With others, we have a much longer period. But the love that is experienced within that it never ends. And going within to the source of life, we give thanks for the time we've had and for the depth of love that has come into our lives. I then had strokes, post-polio syndrome. Then there was alcoholism. Each one taking me deeper inside each one guiding the journey from here to here. As I've often said, I'm about in January to make my 151st trip around the world. But the longest journey I have ever made was from here to here. And how did I see the calling really? Yes, I was blessed to serve in Word and Sacrament at one of the finest churches in the world, Marble Collegiate. But God's plan for me was really in the middle of a health and wellness corporation here in New York City, creating the Care for the Family Caregiver Program. Talking of golden rule living and inclusivity, and for that I'm endlessly grateful. For indeed, that was the gift and the ministry to which I was called. And all of life is a calling, and each of us has a ministry as we minister one to another. For some, it's ordained. But for all of us, it's blessed and it is precious. And on Thanksgiving, we need to thank others for their ministry to us, and thank God for the strength, the abundance, and the ministry that he's given to us in very difficult circumstances, but we're growing through it. We are growing through it. We are never alone, and nothing is given to us for which the strength to overcome it will not be found. So indeed, on this Thanksgiving, let us live to give. It is our gift in return. And this part of the program, I want to conclude it. I have some other things I want to share with you that I think will be of, of value to you. But I want to just share one more prayer. This is done by another friend of mind, infinite, infinite abundance prayer. It's a meditation on abundance. And I want us to take a moment to share this together. May it be my thanksgiving gift to each of you. I dwell in the midst of infinite abundance. The abundance of God is my infinite source. The river of life never stops flowing. It flows through me into lavish expression. God comes to me through unexpected avenues. God works in myriad ways to bless me. I now open my mind to receive my good. Nothing is too good to be true. Nothing is too wonderful to happen. With God as my source, 
nothing amazes me. I give freely and fearlessly into life, and life gives back to me with fabulous increase. Blessings come in expected and unexpected ways. God provides for me in wondrous ways. I am indeed grateful, and I live to give. And it is so. I'm going to be putting that on Facebook later today so that if you'd like to have a copy of it or if you'd like to have the opportunity of sharing it with someone, please, please feel free to do that. Now, as I've talked of the topic, I live to give, uh, I had to smile a little bit because this week I have been blessed with, uh, this week and really last week, I talk to you a little bit about it, but I have attended some of the most wonderful lectures, uh, book readings, and so forth, and I wanted to share them with you because it is the holiday time, and the holiday time is a time when we think of things that are appropriate gifts. But before I do that, and by the way, I have no relationship with any of these other than they've blessed my life, and I want to pass them on to you. But one thought that I like to share always at Thanksgiving time, and we have enough time to do this. If you in your family are dealing with a caregiving situation, and you particularly feel that the other members are not being supported, Thanksgiving, Christmas, when you're all together, does become a positive way of sharing the caregiving, provided that it's done in a loving and inclusive way. Having drinks and then saying to someone, you really aren't helping me at all, and then unloading on someone, that really is not effective and probably will only give more resistance. But there is something that I have done with many families, and I'm blessed that they have found it to be helpful. So I make this suggestion. Many of you know this booklet, I wrote it originally in 2005, and it was updated in 2010, and again in 2017. Care for the Family Caregiver, a place to start. It's exactly what it is. And thanks to Emblem Health, we have given away nearly 200,000 copies in English, in Spanish, and in Chinese. Here's what I suggest. If, and you know it's available on the website, www.emblemhealth.com, forward slash care for the family caregiver. It's available on the website, but I can also provide you with uh, hard copies. Um, my suggestion is that you, if you have two or three other people in your family, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, whatever the relationship might be, feel free to ask for copies or download them or send the uh, PDF to them. That sounds like I know what I'm talking about technologically. Send the PDF, and here's what I invite you to do. Say that you have a friend who's passionate and whose ministry is about family caregiving, and he's written this book entitled Care for the Family Caregiver, A Place to Start. Send it to them. Say, you know, I've read this, and it's really been very helpful to me. Now it takes the burden off of you, but when you all come together, you have a common source, a common resource, and I pray that it can be of help to you in your holiday events and in your life in caregiving, for it sets the stage for you to share what truly is going on in your life. Now, I did tell you books, and I will be selfish in saying, Peace Be Still, this was the book I wrote after my husband Joe passed away, and I want you all to know it is available on Amazon. Uh, please feel free to take a look at it. And come January, I am going to be doing a series on the prayers in this book. We did it once before when we first started this broadcast, and I've had a number of people ask me to do it again. And so, it will be fresh, it will be new, because we're new people of that day, and new things have happened. So I look forward to sharing the book again with you.
Now, the other evening, I went to a book signing and a lecture at uh, the uh, 58th, East 58th Street Library here in New York City. Rachel Condens has written an incredibly new book. Many of you have heard me talk of Rachel because she has written a book called Living with Loss. It's a wonderful 365 day of the year. Meditation, suggestions on dealing with grief. It's written from her own life story, which is equally a powerful story. Like her, she and I both lost husbands. We have become very involved in the world of family caregiving. She has remarried, and as you know, I'm about to do the same. God is good. But we have pieces that we need to clean up from, and they can be physical pieces. So I love the title, Finding Peace Emotionally, Spiritually, One Piece at a Time. And it's a wonderful, wonderful book on how you go about beginning, how you go about continuing. Going through items, and if you live in a small New York apartment, you have to do that. Uh, she happens to live in Colorado, so she has a, a bigger home. But it's a wonderful book, and it's a wonderful play on the word peace. Because really, the, the other evening, it was so marvelous, we had a woman who said, thank you for giving me permission. So I commend that to any of you or any of you to give to someone who may be going through that situation. It's very gentle, it's very loving, and it certainly doesn't say throw everything out. Pieces that tell a story, we keep. Pieces that really don't, we let go. A second book that I want to share with you, I've just gotten copies of it. Uh, I ordered 10 copies, it was so fabulous. And this is the book Confronting, I want to make sure you can see it, Confronting Hate. It's the biography of Rabbi Mark Tannenbaum. I was privileged to hear him speak. I didn't know him well, but he was, and I love the phrase, the untold story of the rabbi who stood up for human rights, racial justice, and religious reconciliation. Powerful, powerful story. And the Tannenbaum Center here in New York, and that's how you can Google it and how you can get copies at a very special rate. The Tannenbaum Center for Interreligious Understanding was founded in his memory by, and I'm in full disclosure, it's, the woman is one of my most treasured friends, Dr. Georgette Bennett. And this book is very special because their son was born seven weeks after Mark died. So this book was written to say, we want to share your father and help you to know him and his incredible work. For he was so far ahead of his time and nothing could be more appropriate right here and now. And so as I come to the end of this broadcast, I do so with great thanksgiving. I thank you for sharing with me for these 50 broadcasts, and I pray that many more will come. But it's important, I believe, to stop, to celebrate, to give thanks, for indeed, through this, I live to give. Thank you so much. God bless and a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you next week, Friday with the Rev. Thank you.